don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they can be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. Shoot, yeah, the, um, yeah, I actually like that a lot. The Shivering Truth was, uh, is super cool. It was, it, it's a surrealist type of thing, but not like crazy weird. I dig it though. Yeah. I mean, this is coming from me. I love, uh, I absolutely love, whatchamacallit, um, Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, it's enjoyable to me, and it doesn't. This this might say a li- might reveal a little bit too much about my internal <laughs> mechanisms, uh-huh. um, but it doesn't uh, it 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 doesn't upset me anywhere near as much as it should. <laughs> like there's people around me who get extremely upset by it, and I just I don't get that upset by it. That's because you're a monster, John. Yeah, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. <laughs> Continuing the trend of me talking about Transformers from last week. Yeah. Tomorrow, when this releases, yeah, Bumblebee comes out, really? and I'm hoping it saves uh, the Transformers franchise. Oh man, because it's it's directed by uh, the guy who directed Kubo and the Two Strings, which is really good. Really. Um, I saw a trailer recently, in which two Decepticons ha- showed more personality than any of the Decepticons in the first five, <laughs> or is it six now, Transformers movies. Shoot. Right so, on. So, while that doesn't necessarily mean uh, that the movie will be good, yeah. at the very least, it's better than Lady Ladies Man 257 or whatever uh, Shia LaBeouf's <laughs> eBay account was. Oh, was that really... <laughs> <laughs> it's a count. It was Ladies Man something something something. I I don't know. It's 2007 that that came out. It's over a decade. Oh man, that happy happy cryptid days. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's our special holiday episode. Yeah, tis the um, season. So we're definitely we're definitely oh one two seven. Sorry, we're definitely gonna go over a cryptid that's directly related to Christmas because that's yeah. the way that that's the way that we did uh, Thanksgiving and. Uh, yeah, it's, it's also the way we did Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it's the Santa episode. I mean, Santa, uh, he was killed after 13 days. He's resurrected. Um, uh, oh, Santa, who sure. art in heaven. How would be thy name? Yeah. Yada, yada, yada. <laughs> um, all that good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. We just lost some listeners. <laughs> um uh this week on we ruin everything <laughs> starring myself john dunham and me brandon boyer uh we ruin everything there's nothing else to it we just make it terrible <laughs> <laughs> this week's cryptid is a bit interesting i picked it as a kind of present to the listeners because Ooh. it's something that we've been wanting to do for a long time we haven't oh yeah uh well i've been wanting to do so it happened in 1969 it's a humanoid and it's in washington dc or state state i've been giving you some hints about it through the past two weeks have you yeah okay it's um so what do we have I'll give you one further hint. It's northern Washington, and it's near the border of Canada. Oh, okay. Um, 1969, <clears throat> United States. We have... Uh, it's the last time the Beatles played a pl- public performance. Um, On the rooftop, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, Boeing 747 Jumbo Jet first came out. Um, okay. 
We have we have Woodstock. Woodstock happened in 1969, and we have um, actually that's when that's when Neil Armstrong walked on the moon. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember that because of a uh, a song from a Disney Channel show <laughs> that haunts my every waking moment every time I think of the, the, oh, the year 1969. So this was a fun one for me to re- research. Is this what time of year did this take place? Uh, uh, I think the initial sighting was sometime in October, but October. Let me just check that. Oh man, oh, November, November twenty fourth. November when? Late November. Twenty fourth. So yeah, late November, early December. In Washington is when it all started. In Washington State. Here, uh, you're never gonna guess the actual thing. Well, cause... hold, hold. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm connecting but... dots. You should be able to guess what it is, not necessarily the event or the the specific instance. I'm guessing, so I'm combining Washington and the time of year. I have a coworker mm-hmm. who skis a lot, as well as the time of year that we're recording this. I'm guessing it's Yeti related. It's in Washington State, Brandon. The Yeti's in Nepal. <laughs> it's abominable snowman. It's cold Bigfoot. It's called Bigfoot, John. It's basically Bigfoot. It's not... Well, no. Okay. There's a lot to unpack in that. (laughs) The name of this particular instance... I just got your link. Yeah. So we're going to... We'll get to the name that they gave this. It's it's somewhat offensive. So I'm probably only going to say it once. Yeah. And it's also not the name of this episode. So just... (laughs) We're going to couch this one deep in this episode and hopefully no one's offended by it but yes it is in fact a bigfoot it's the bossberg sasquatch is what i'm going to be calling it for it's most of uh, this. the picture on the top of your copy it appears phenomenal. to be a man in a in a in a ape suit uh crumping <laughs> it it definitely is a man in an ape suit crump- crumping but we're gonna get into that so I wanted to celebrate our first uh, holiday season with a bang, so to speak. Yeah. Um, so it's time that we cover Bigfoot. It's got a dick. I'm looking at the picture. There's a bulge. There's there like a, a David bulge. Bowie labyrinth style bulge. Yeah, there, there definitely is. <laughs> <laughs> so if you don't know what Bigfoot is, pause the podcast for a second. And just just take a look at our uh, the middle person on our image. Uh huh. That's the current popular like idea of what Bigfoot is. Also, maybe watch the documentary Harry and the Hendersons. True. Yes. Or the spinoff TV show. Yeah, it is not to be mistaken with actor Jason Momoa, Aquaman, or Khal Drogo. No, no. Although sometimes they have been misidentified as such. Yes. Um, however, if if uh, you want to actually know a little bit more, Bigfoot is a cryptid that rose to prominence in North America in the early to mid-1900s. The first reports of the creature, and I'm saying the first reports of the creature because every report before this is attribu- uh, attributing old folklore and myths to something that was not colloquially known as Bigfoot. Oh, okay. Uh, That's fun. Yeah. So the first reports of the creature came from the Fraser Valley in the 1920s okay, in British Columbia. Um, And they were collected by a man named John W. Burns. So before I go on, this this whole event is going to be its own episode, so I'm not going to delve into it too deeply because it's kind of bonkers how Bigfoot even became a thing and how Sasquatch became a thing. Uh, But really briefly, based on original accounts, it's nothing like what we know today. I, okay. Yeah. I so, just uh, noticed this is your longest copy I've ever seen. Yeah, it's a long one. This is a big story. <laughs> it took me a while to write this one up. I finished it early, but it took a while. Uh, oh, I believe it. So, in the original accounts, yeah, it was basically described as a race of giant wild people who lived in the mountains. Okay. Meaning the Sasquatch of uh, Burns. He's a Virginian. He's from the Appalachians. No, no, no. He's this is from uh, British Columbia, Canada. 
Gotcha. He, I don't know any uh, Canadian mountain ranges. I'm sorry. Uh, this one would probably be closer to the Rockies because the Rockies like span the entire continent. Gotcha. Um, so these Sasquatch are basically, by description, giant Native Americans. <laughs> uh, and based on what I read, it was more or less that it was just a bunch of tall people. Yeah. Who are a little hairier. Who lived secluded from the other tribes. <laughs> um, because there was actually a story in which a woman claimed to have had a Sasquatch's baby, but not in like not in like the weird way. In the what other way yeah. is there? Well, There's no, the no. Way. It, it wasn't like she she had a child that was half ape, half human. It was a human. Like she stole it. No, she had a kid. Like she she she, she done doinked him. She don't done doinked a Sasquatch. That's what happened. Based on the account I read, which once again, I will get into this in a separate episode because it is it is its own phenomenal read. It's it's a good one. Um. So in my careless reports, whisper wasn't even written then. I'm picturing the uh, the purple mattress commercial. But with the careless whisper music and some um, a Canadian woman uh, attempting to seduce the Bigfoot. She just has to have big feet. Peggy Hill would do very well with Sasquatch. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. No one's safe. Not even cartoon characters for my riffs. <laughs> so modern reports differ substantially. Uh... When you look at, like, even our logo, yeah. it's not just, like, a, a hairy dude. It's, like, structurally different than humans. It's closer yeah. to an ape than it is to a human. More like a uh, uh, Gigantolificus, the uh, large orangutan uh -huh. creature, than it is to a modern human. Um, these modern accounts are largely molded by four separate encounters with these types of creatures. Um, there's the William Rowe sighting, which is the first modern drawing of a, of a Bigfoot, which I've included in the show notes and included in the, well, actually I've included it in our, our research document. Um, uh, is that the illustration that I'm looking at? It sure is. Bigfoot's, it was a female Bigfoot. Bigfoot's busty. Yeah. Bigfoot is busty. Bigfoot, uh, uh... You know, I'm I'm just gonna withhold all comment. It's fair, honestly. It's fair. Bigfoot. Bigfoot. You know that song "Brick House" that was yes. about Bigfoot. That Bigfoot is <laughs> definitely built like a brick house. Yeah. Um. The the Bluff Creek tracks, which once again own episode, because that was like the first modern like anything of Bigfoot, really. Uh -huh. Uh, the obvious Patterson Gimlin film, which if you haven't seen, look it up. We'll once again definitely do an episode on that. Yeah, because that's its own thing. It's bizarre. If you look into Patterson's life before and after the events, it's insane. And I'm not going to go into any details about that. And finally, the subject of today's episode. Yeah, the Bosbergs. Uh, Sasquatch. Okay. Or is it's more colloquially known as Cripplefoot. Oh, man. I will say that I did not come up with this name. Yeah, no, that's in quotes, right? You, you, you're, that's, yeah. that's what they called it. So that's yes. Im information that needs to be shared, but not, yes. it is not in any way what we are calling it. I am going to be calling it the Bossberg Sasquatch. Yeah. <laughs> because I feel terrible if I use the name that they call it. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know if anyone wants to listen to me say what's basically a slur for uh, an hour. <laughs> yeah. Um, so before I go on, uh, the where I found out about this story and one of my major like primary direct me to new sources for this book. Uh, was Abominable Science, Origins of the Yeti, Nessie, and Other Famous Cryptids. Which, uh, I will say, not to cut you off, 
is yeah. uh, I also have a copy of this book, but have not seen the Bosberg uh, Bigfoot in it um, mm-hmm. uh, yet. It's the closest to a scholastic book fair book, something that I feel like I talk about all the time. You do. It is so, it is so, if anyone who is uh, uh, 18 to 35 is like, oh, scholastic book fair, I missed that. Pick up this book. This is like, you could, I could see this when I was younger being right in the middle of that, that magazine. Oh yeah. It's also a very good book. Yeah. It teaches very good principles of skeptical thought. Uh, and it goes over the, the, the Nessie chapter of this book alone is worth the price of entry, which on Kindle right now is about 10 bucks. Um, it's written by, uh, Daniel Loxton and Donald R. Prothero. Mm -hmm. Um, I recommend it because they source literally everything and it was the jumping off point for the research for this episode. Right on. Uh, I just wanted to plug them just because it was so instrumental in how we made this. Bossburg, Washington. Today, it doesn't exist. Wow, what? It's a ghost town. Oh, man. So, at one point, it was a mining town on the border of the United States and Canada. Okay. According to, according to Wikipedia, its maximum population was 800. <laughs> and before 1896, it was known as Young America. No. Yes. And it was renamed... Renamed to Bossburg after its first resident, C.S. Boss, who for some reason, his, the first two parts of his name are lost to history, apparently. <laughs> this, the this, o- is, this is the prototype of a small town. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, 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 it's wild. This is um, awesome. Basically, I think they, they mined silver and lead. Oh, that memory seems correct. healthy. Yeah. Oh, it's super healthy. Uh, currently, the only thing that's left in the town is the cemetery. Oh, okay. <laughs> which is maintained by local families because ghosts gotta have some place to live. Yeah, ghosts gotta have them places to live, especially in a ghost town. Yeah, they're like that Squidward. They gotta live under a big stone. So, November twenty fourth, nineteen sixty nine, which, if you'll recall, was when I said all this happened. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, enter Ivan Marks. He's a longtime Bigfoot hunter from California. He was born, well, he was living in California before this. He was born in Illinois in 1921. Okay. Um, he moved to Bossburg with his wife, Peggy, which I want to make note of. This is literally the first time a wife was named in any of these (laughs) cryptozoological things. And I think it's literally because she's on a, uh, on the credits to something that he produced later on. Oh, I think that's literally the only reason we know her name (laughs) because I have yet to find an instance of someone spotting a cryptid and their wife being named before this. Yeah. (laughs) So in the late sixties, he uh, claimed to have work in the area. Although the main article I found about Mm. this man really doubted that he had work in the area. (laughs) <laughs> and of course i doubt that he would have had work in the area and based on the later accounts of the story i super doubt he had work in the area <laughs> so coincidentally after ivan had run out of money and moved to Bosburg to find new work he found bigfoot tracks in the town's garbage dump <laughs> um, so the bigfoots hang out they're there they've got their raccoon buddies they're all uh, having fun with both of them having opposable thumbs. That's true. That's true. Bigfoot might even have, uh, I don't know, he has like humanoid toes, but I bet you can, you can pick stuff up with them. Yeah. Um, so in aside to this, a lot of recent sources claim that the local butcher was the person who found it. Uh, but there was an original article that was written that literally said, after the suggestion from the local butcher to, you know, look around the area for Bigfoot tracks, Ivan went to the dump and found them. Huh. So I think what they're trying to do is, like, people who support this story are trying to couch it in the butcher being the person to find it and not Ivan Marks. Yeah. And there's a reason for that. Oh, and this man. story is going to go into why the actual discovery of the original tracks 
they want as far away from Ivan Marks as possible. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the tracks themselves were found in the soft soil of the dump, and they had a distinctive feature which gave it its name. The right foot was malformed. And, like, oh, really malformed. I was, I was, so there is an image attached, and I was going to say, it's of a right foot, which is why I reacted that way when, when you said the right foot was malformed. The right mm -hmm. foot looks, if you imagine, like, a kidney bean shape, sort of like a normal footprint would leave. If you exaggerated that shape, it's, like, extremely curved in to one side. Yeah, it's curved towards the other, it's towards the left side of the body. So, like, it's as though um, someone took a foot and bent it inward towards, like, your other foot. Yes. And I will say, based on the picture, something that um, I can picture a proponent of this being real would say is that the heel and the toes seem to have sunk more deeply into the snow than the arch of the foot. Um, which means something was either walking or that whoever had placed that was wearing it on their foot as they tread, because that's sort of how, how you walk heel to toe. And then your, your, uh, the arch of your foot would leave less of an imprint. Yeah. Um, which is part of the reason why so many people showed up. It, it triggered a flurry of, uh, Bigfoot researchers. And the fact that it was a deformed foot, like showing abnormality made them, like lose their mind even more yeah um marks in particular would be joined by a prominent bigfoot researcher known as renee de hot de hidden i'm gonna be calling him <laughs> renee uh he's a swiss bigfoot hunter who is always involved in the hunt for the squatch whenever possible always got to be out squatching so people show up in the area there's a flurry of excitement you know Tons of hunters showing up, looking around, all that stuff. December 13th, 1969. So a few weeks after the initial find. Okay. Uh, Renee and Marks were checking up on some baited tracks when, you know, Marks went ahead to check it first. Uh, so they pull up, they stop. Marks go, gets out of the car. He walks into the woods. Do, 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 do. A few seconds later, <laughs> he comes racing back, screaming that he sees he's got a big foot. He's got a Bigfoot tracks. Um, they would find 1,089 Bigfoot tracks. What? Yes. So they found, like, a really long track. That's a lot. Yeah. Did so, – here's a question. Did anybody other than them find the 1,089 Bigfoot tracks? Or well, was it get only these two lone guys that say, oh, yeah, we totally found those? We're about to get into that. Okay. So Ivan – didn't have his camera with him for some reason. Okay. I, I don't know why, but he hops in the car. They drive back down the road to get some photography equipment. Uh, Renee was brought along with them. So Renee hasn't seen the, the tracks yet. Keep that in mind. Still, I, okay, that's a big old red flag. Because even yep. if you didn't have your camera equipment, if someone you were already with in the woods went just up ahead to check a trap and said hey i found bigfoot traps my first thought wouldn't be okay let's leave it would be well i would want to go see the tracks i would, that's, I would yeah. want to go look at them yeah so make matters worse on the way to get the photography equipment which is probably like a mile away uh, -huh. uh they passed an empty jeep okay um Renee, Renee made uh, made Mark stop, made him get the, the plate, all that good stuff, and they were able to get in contact with him at a later time. However, and this is key, on the way back from getting the photography equipment, the Jeep wasn't there. Okay. We very people important. people jeeping. Very important that the yeah. Jeep is missing. Uh, purportedly, the owner of the Jeep was discovered and claimed to have seen the tracks and said, I got out of that area as soon as possible. So, supposedly, someone else saw the tracks. Yeah, uh, I guess this, to me, feels like... So, they were out checking traps. This is bringing back... Our, uh, I'm recalling uh, a link that you sent me, actually, that the police in a state sent out um, a camera trap 
mm-hmm. um, in order to capture local wildlife. For, for I forget what it was. It might have been coyotes. And someone else had discovered the police's camera trap. And what followed was a series of images of uh, men dressed as elderly women, men dressed in ape suits. Basically, someone found a trap and they are and they played a they played a joke on them. The police oh, yeah. found it pretty funny. It was on their Facebook page. They uh, they thanked the person for giving them a chuckle. But this feels similar to that where guy sees a trap, guy goes home and goes, you know what would be funny. And then Guy plays a prank near the trap. It does seem an awful like like that. Yeah. So the tracks themselves were very complicated. How so? They started at a river. They crossed the street, the railroad tracks, its own trail. It almost looked like it was meandering Uh in the area. And then it ends in the river. Okay. Yep. Uh, Overall, the tracks appear to be largely artificial. To anyone who thinks about how an animal moves through the woods. It, they um, looked artificial. They stopped at the river. So the, the reason that seems questionable to me is that if tracks lead to a river, most likely the animal will cross to the other side. If they stop at the river, especially if it's snowy the way the image had depicted, that means uh, some animal decided to walk either up or downstream in extremely cold weather far enough where no other track was visible which seems less than likely Mm -hmm. maybe (laughs) proper maybe i don't know i don't know (laughs) uh it raised renee's suspicion as well because it was in a location he would definitely visit daily because it was near the garbage dump so it was (laughs) he's a guy he's a garbage guy okay yeah trust the guy the guy that hangs out at the dump well no he was hanging out near the dump because that's where the first tracks were seen I gotcha, okay. So it's an obvious location for a hoax to plant tracks. Yeah. However. Yeah. Renee ultimately believed the tracks to be authentic. Of course he did. Of course he did. Um, Based on the tracks, he even hypothesized that the Bigfoot had suffered an accident which dislodged its shin bone at some point in the past. Because there was more weight placed on the right foot. Okay. Yep. Yeah. No, it's definitely real. Definitely real. Nothing nothing fake about it. Regardless of this le- the legitimacy. How do you know it was the shim bone? I got other bones in my foot that'll make me put more weight on one than the other. Yeah, he knew it. He knew. In fact, I've had a hernia. So I put more weight on one foot than the other even just for that. That's not even a, a skeletal in- injury and that's not even a, a leg injury. That, uh, that, I'm telling okay. you, it's 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 the shin bone. It's the shin. The shin. Don't totally. think about it. You see what you see. This thing you're doing. Yeah. You see this thing you're doing. You're thinking about it. You know, what you, you know what I need you to stop doing. Stop thinking about it. Okay. <laughs> Th- I'm watching you. All thoughts cease. If you if you start thinking about it, I'm gonna stop doing the podcast. Uh uh. Okay. <laughs> Regardless of the legitimacy of the event. Uh, it did a big hood fun, a big hood fun, uh, a big hood funter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's a professional big, big, hu- big hood funter. A big hood funter. Yeah. A big, hu- big, a big hood funter. <laughs> <laughs> so a hunting friends, he was kicked off. Yeah. People who were looking for the Bigfoot came with everything from tranquilizer guns to aircraft to search for the creature. Keep in mind, this is a town that, at its maximum, over its entire lifespan, reached 800 people, and that was nearly 100 years before this. The town was on a, da- a downward a downward slope, <laughs> and it probably had way less than that. At this yeah. Point. Because keep in mind, this is only, uh, let's see, 50 years ago, 60 years ago, somewhere in that range. Yeah. Uh, so it's a ghost town now. That doesn't <laughs> happen overnight. No. Um, it sounds so, like just about everybody went out there, right? If the town is that small, 
and any number or group of people goes out looking for it that's a not insignificant portion of the total population that's going out looking for this and i mean i guess since it's a small town it's, it's excusable to, if they didn't have a lot going on to want to check it out mm -hmm. um but they should have been right it's uh f the the free love is going on uh again like in the previous episode this is when drugs is getting good they yeah. like they've got okay i guess yeah so fine fine it's fine it's even stranger when you consider the fact that like like it, i want to point this out because when i was researching this topic there were so many names that were thrown about the problem is there are so many bigfoot hunters in this area that i'll be reading a story or an article or something about yeah. this and then out of nowhere they're like yeah and so and so was there as well <laughs> and it's just like what and then it will be like oh yeah and then this guy was there and then this guy was there there's so many moving parts because there's so many people just mucking up like evidence and mucking up like everything around the area yeah so with all so. these new people someone else spots a bigfoot oh okay joe metlow a local prospector uh -huh. decides at this point, I'm going to get involved in this story. <laughs> Good on him. Yeah. Um, the next year, in January 20, on January 2017, he claims that he has seen a Bigfoot, and he has immobilized it in a mine. <laughs> <laughs> he found it. He found it while running claim lines, which is basically, based on my research, uh, it's when you're looking, when you're prospecting, basically, which is his job. Yeah, 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 He's, yeah, yeah. And uh, so he was looking for he was looking for Mister Pocket, basically. He was basically <laughs> looking for Mister Pocket. That's 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 the way I read it. <laughs> so he even had someone to corroborate the story. Oh, okay. Well, not so much corroborate that there was a Bigfoot, uh... but to corroborate that the story he was telling the people was the story he told that person that's not how that works that's uh no that's normal that's normal okay yeah, yeah it's normal i i yeah. bring some along who i told the story to and then they say oh yeah he told me that story uh, that's normal okay. that's proof right that's totally proof if that's proof then we might know a literal demon yeah that's true we definitely know at least one literal demon. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. Okay. Um, so the person he brought along went by the name of Bill Streeter. Okay. He was a state wildlife officer who did corroborate the story in that Joe had told him the same story. He said, yeah, he told me that. Yeah, that's not cor that, uh... He then Fine. fades into the background is not is never heard from again. <laughs> I'm picturing him like Peter Griffin just backing into shrubbery. That's pretty much what I would, well that's actually uh Homer. Oh, was that Homer? Sorry, I get all my cartoons mixed up. Yeah. Uh so that's pretty much what happened with that. Um and Joe was actually able to convince another Bigfoot hunter Okay. By the name of Dennis Jensen. How many are we? This is three now, two? This is at least three Bigfoot hunters who are named in the story, with more in the background. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so he convinces Dennis and Renee yeah. that the creature was real. Okay. It was immobilized. How does he, he know it was immobilized? Is he just Well, he immobilized it. He immobilized it in the mine. Like, he uh, trapped it in the mine. Gotcha. Okay. Um, okay. And he had already he had already sold the rights to the creature. Wait, wait what? How does so, that like, even happen? He had he had found someone to sell it to before this point, basically. Okay. So, the total he had originally sold it for was never disclosed. That's, but I, I'm curious. Okay. But yeah, but a bidding war started between no uh, Dennis and Renee. For the specimen. Right on. 
or even rights to see it. <laughs> I like this. Okay. Okay. It, it reached $55,000. Yeah. Homeboy's playing the game. Get money, get paid, get your bread. Come on, man. To right see it on. dead or alive. Okay. And the dead it, part seems. Uh, well, alive it, seems harder than dead. I'll leave it yeah. there. It. The bidding war reached a point yeah. that it actually caused like a major internal breakup of the Sasquatch hunters there. <laughs> like Dennis and Renee stopped working together as a result yeah. of it. Um and after basically I think Renee was the one who made the fifty five thousand dollar bid as like a come on, just show it to us. Gotcha, okay. After that bid, interest fizzled. Because no one could afford to pay fifty five thousand dollars just to look at it. That's the thing. So it's fifty five yeah. grand just to look at that. Here's here's the the weirdest part though. Yeah. Metlo didn't get that money. He just kind of abandoned the story. Oh, okay. Yeah. And he then switched to he had a Bigfoot foot in a freezer. A Bigfoot foot? In his freezer. He had a Bigfoot foot in his freezer. Okay. Uh, has anyone else observed that? Or is that uh, a pure claim that he made? Uh, No, he's got a Bigfoot foot in his freezer. Okay. Yeah, I'll buy it. Sure. Yeah. People wanted to pay $1,000 to take a look at it. but you What? Know, uh, he didn't allow anyone to look at it. Why? Uh, well, that's because... Well, I know why. I can tell, I can tell you why. Because he didn't and, have it. Yet another bidding war got kicked off by that. Really? Yes. And once again, he did not deliver. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. So at this point, I'm just wondering, what's your end game, Joe Metlo? So I, I, I'm i going to, to pause you for a moment. Because $100 in 1969... Mm-hmm. Is worth six hundred and sixty-seven dollars and ninety cents. So six hundred and sixty-eight dollars. So back of the envelope, it's about three hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, today's money. Just to look at the foot in his freezer was sixty-six thousand dollars. So that <laughs> you know what, John? I've got. I've got a I've got a Bigfoot foot in my freezer. I'm just saying. I mean, if you want to take a look at it, there's a minor fee, but I have it. You can see it if you want. I was born at night, Brandon. But I wasn't born last night. <laughs> so people finally realized he was a liar. Really? What, it, it hang, took on, a while. Hang, hang Let me do my best, John. What? It's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, they finally realized he was a liar. It took a while. I could have told you that. I could have told you that when he had someone confirm that his story was the part that was corroborated. Yeah. And I, I also want to keep in mind, like, you know, keep in mind, this is all happening because Mark's found footprints. Uh... None of this would have been happening in the area. If yeah. the initial sighting had ha- hadn't happened. There's no doubt in my mind. Um, so after this happened, because of the falling out that occurred and, like, the general lack of enthusiasm, because now there's, like, two definite hoaxes that just happened. Yeah. People, like, kind of left the area. Although, although, Renee although... did keep in contact with Marx. Okay. And then... On a fateful night, October 1970, yeah. Marx called Rene. What'd he call him? I've got film of the cripple. <laughs> oh. And I, I in the in the show notes I have a little sick there. Yeah, set in context. Because that is a quote. Yeah. That is a quote. A direct quote from a book oh, about Sasquatch. Yeah. 
But before we get into that, yeah, we got oh. some calls that we got to take care of. Yeah, it's. I think it's regarding the ADA. I knew I was going to take a risk on this one. I had to take the risk, though. <laughs> you need to know about this really, really offensively named Bigfoot. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, they're mad. I know what the ADA is. Today's sponsor is Donner's Party Supplies. The winter holidays are upon us, and the new year is almost here. I hate feeling left out in the cold when I know that the life of a party hangs on having the right supplies. That's why I trust store owners, Reed and McCutcheon, with all my party needs. They have years of experience guiding potential partygoers on what they need to ensure that your family and friends will have a time that they could not have imagined. Click the radio microphone and use code HASTINGS for free shipping and a tasty treat with your order. Now back to the show. This is a really, really weird story. It was really stressful to write this one up because I was really, really worried about, one, the name. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, it's both times it's it's said in context, right? So that's... Yeah. But... It, it, like, it's a, they're, they're direct quotes of someone from a time period, so that's... Yeah. yeah. The other thing is too the um there's so many moving parts and so many people involved in the story. There's a lot of people there's a lot of people who consider themselves to be Bigfoot hunters. Yes, there sure are. Yeah. Uh what's his name? Uh Trapper? Yeah. He's a pretty he's a pretty prominent one from uh West Virginia. I Our friend you from You don't uh, have to clarify. Our friend, you our friend don't from, have to clarify for Mad Monsters. Yeah, yeah, Trapper from Mad Monsters. <laughs> yeah, Trapper. He's a yeah. good guy. And by good guy, I mean he's probably not that good of a guy. I would not be surprised if he's a monster. But, you know, I don't know anything about him, so I can't really throw any shade on him. But I mean, you can. I can. You can. Because I can. here's why. You cannot know a person, but you can judge their their public facing personality and that's if that's fair. what he chooses his public facing personality to be what's his private personality no one sort of jukes so no one goes i'm gonna go worse no one goes i'm just gonna go worse everyone tries to put their best they, they pre present their best you know version of themselves even if it's like a made-up version like ziggy stardust they mm -hmm. it's you never you never go backwards you don't go backwards from that. Hmm. The way the world has been going, I'm beginning to wonder. But we'll leave that on a different <laughs> podcast. So anyway, uh, there is an account by a man named Peter Brine who becomes uh, instrumental to this film. Really? And he just appears out of nowhere, basically. Yeah. Uh he kind of supplants Renee as like the main Bigfoot hunter interacting with Marks in okay. the story at this point. So I found an article written by him and it was basically the way the article was written was a, no, really I'm cool. This guy's the jerk. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. He's okay. And we're about to get into why. So Mark's Bigfoot encounter began with an early morning call from a railway train driver who said that his engine had hit a Bigfoot the night before. What? Okay, hell, hold up. If I was a driver of any sort of any vehicle and I hit a Bigfoot, I would call someone maybe right away. I'm just thinking, I, if I hit a deer, I would call someone right away. No, you gotta call, you gotta call the local Bigfoot. Yeah, yeah. Wait, wait at least twenty four hours, then call the Bigfoot hunter. Okay, I dig it. Mm -hmm. That's the most important thing. That is a rule. If you hit something humanoid, you call the Bigfoot hunter first. Don't yeah. call the cops. Call the Bigfoot hunter. Call Mister Wolf. He's the fixer. He's gonna hide everything for you. Mm hmm. Yeah, he'll turn it into a Bigfoot. 
for you. Yeah. <laughs> also, um, as an aside and editorialization on this quote, because yeah. this is a direct quote. Um, if something hit a big, if a train hit a Bigfoot, if a train hit anything, and it was going at any speed, it would be dust. Yeah. Like, I just wanted to, I want to take an aside and point that out. <laughs> it's Anyways. not great. I've seen pictures of stuff. Yeah, it's not fun. So, yeah. the man, as Marx said, gave him the location of the accident, and so, the same day, without delay, he set out to track and find the Bigfoot. Okay. There was a blood trail. <laughs> It's meaning, only a flesh wound. <laughs> meaning the Bigfoot was hit, but not hit bad enough to die. Uh, unless it got just, like, even clipped by a train, that beheads people. Like if yeah. a, a, like a, a, a wire coming off the train, it has murdered people. I just, Trains, I know, Yeah. I, I usually like to read things and let them ride, but, like, that's already a really major crack in this story to me but anyway it is um, he said that led him into some four thousand five forty five hundred high foothills roughly six miles north and east of bossburg washington okay about midday in bright sunshine and under a clear sky close to the deep snow line of the upper hills he caught up with a bigfoot which he said was limping and appeared to be injured so this Bigfoot has moved at least six miles after getting hit by a train. Yeah, that's, I'm not buying, one, I'm not buying that. Two, I don't know what he does next after he finds a Bigfoot that he could presumably, if it's injured, track or do whatever he wants with. But I'm pretty sure whatever follows next, I'm not going to follow. And that's not the skeptical way of looking at things, but he, it feel. It feels like he's full of shit. It feels... My gut says he's full of shit. And, like, well, I, I live near train tracks, and there are a lot of people who... Um, do things at the train tracks, and I will say that it is... There's... you. Once you are hit by a train, there is no coming back from that regardless of your size including your the the size of your feet that's fair so the creature he stated weighed at least 650 pounds how does he know that it was covered with thick dark brown hair and stood at a minimum of eight feet in height how does he know that he knows it i mean you i can look at someone and say oh yeah this uh this piece of chapstick i got right here 300 pounds Okay. I'm just really strong. So a a heavyweight MMA champion is about six foot two, two hundred and fifty pounds. Mm-hmm. If you're eight foot tall, so you're two feet taller than that, which is less than three times taller than that. Uh, I feel like math don't do not be adding up. Yeah, I, I don't know how he came across that, but you know, whatever. Yeah. So. Mark said that as soon as he saw the creature, he turned his 16 millimeter movie camera on and shot about 30 seconds of footage in three 10 second sequences. And then, oh, so we have, there's the a camera, recording. There's a yeah. ver- there's a clear, stable recording of a creature that is not questionable because it was injured by a train, therefore not moving quickly, and there's no reason that someone on a hill couldn't take a clear video of what's apparently an extant creature. Correct. Correct. So he shot three 10 second sequences okay. and then dropping the camera, which apparently was carried on a shoulder strap. Oh, okay. uh, he quickly and with seconds to spare pulled out his still camera and took half a dozen pictures. The Bigfoot then disappeared uh okay and yeah, so he so left he's the... got the high ground and it's injured it disappeared okay yeah mm-hmm. and so he left the area and walked bound back down to a main route it okay it's injured 
How does it d- disappear and why do you leave the area? Track it. Track it. It can't be hard. So, I found the footage. Yeah, okay. So, let's let's see what we've got here. Here, in actual footage taken of what is said to be a real Bigfoot, is a creature similar to Dr. Krantz's club-footed giant. Filmed by Ivan Marks in late 1969 in Bosburg, Washington, the film has been denounced as a fake by some monster hunters. Here is yet another film of an alleged Bigfoot, also so that's taken by Marks in the second one is not the, the footage question. Mark's a hunter and maker of nature films. Insists on its authenticity. Okay, for we're, we're anyone... gonna go. What the second one? Don't don't use the second one because we're gonna get into the second one. But okay, the for first anyone part... who's who who's who's the amount of uh okay, I'm going to be linking this video. Good in the show notes. Good because That's... it's essential to this story. It's. Do you want okay. to describe what just happened? It's it's clearly a person dressed in all black, but not even an ape suit, I would say. And their version of... So you've heard of overacting before? Someone, like, overdoes something? They're overacting um, what they think a Bigfoot with an injured foot would do to the extent... To the extent... Where it looks like someone is doing, like, imagine, if you will, a culturally culturally insensitive person doing an impression of an Irish jig, dressed in all black. That's actually pretty good. It, it kind of looks, I was thinking it looks like a weird combination of, like, an Irish jig and a wa- one-person waltz. Yeah, like, it's way, like, like, I can't, the extent of which I can't cannot yeah. be described it's moving really good for an injured bigfoot though it's i will per- say that perplexingly much. bad it's someone moving with one a lot of energy like if you imagine if you had four red bulls and then were told to pretend your right foot didn't work so you're just sort of throwing yourself around and doing a jig that's what was in this video um i will say given the time period in which it was taken it's of exceptional quality it's not you know the the brush in that is blurry which you could expect because there it's brush but the outline of the person in all black is extremely sharp mm-hmm. um, i mean yeah. to be fair the honestly the worst part of this is this was taken from a, a video like a like a vhs video clearly because yeah the, the scan lines and all that but it, it was 16 millimeter film. 16 millimeter film is actually pretty high fidelity. Yeah, no, it, it's, it's not perfect, but it's it's better than it's better than 90s video. I mean, this shows you why modern day sightings are blurry and shaky. Because it turns out, if it's a stable camera, uh, you're showing your hand a little bit. So, according to the person who was writing that that account. Yeah, uh, Peter Bryan. Marks wanted to sell the footage to the Bigfoot Project sponsors for twenty five thousand dollars. Oh, all right. And this was pending the authentication of the footage of the footage. And now, I want to remind you, Marks was probably hard up on cash at this point. Let me tell you something: twenty five thousand dollars in modern money is almost two million dollars. Twenty five thousand in yeah, right. nineteen sixty nine, so six hundred and like eighty dollars to a hundred, and then I'm multiplying that by two five zero. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm gonna leave off the others. Uh, oh, never mind. It's one hundred and seventy thousand dollars. I had too many still, zeros. One hundred and seventy thousand like dollars. That's a lot of money. That's, That's still a lot like of money. A lot of money. Yeah, I could pay off my house with that kind of money, and still have enough to buy a new car. I could. Buy my neighbor's house. Yeah. So, uh, the original footage was sent in a sealed metal container, sent by certified mail, yeah. to Washington D.C. Okay. I... A working copy was given to Peter Bryan, so we could, like, you know, verify. Yeah. During this period, Marks was employed by the Bigfoot Project. 
he received a hefty monthly salary and access to outdoor equipment. We're talking uh, trucks, snowmobiles, uh, people to help him do tracking, everything. He had access to it all. Like, a lot. They gave him a lot. Did they say what his monthly salary was? It didn't say that. I couldn't find it. But supposedly okay. it was it was respectable enough that they made note of how respectable it was. Okay. I uh, so here's a fun fact. Um the for New York only because I received an email from HR because they're um deducting a percentage of everybody's pay for um so New York State has a thing where, like, if you, there's a death in the family or if you have a newborn, you can yep, take yep. paid leave for an extended mm-hmm. period of time. So they're, because of this, which just came out, deducting something like 0.1% of your pay or whatever, which I'm fine with. Fine. Go for it. Do whatever. But yep. um, they base their calculations off the the average weekly income of a New York State household. So Mm -hmm. what do you think the average, not you, not me, not anybody else, just the average, the making the most money, making the least money, what's your guess for each week, what's the typical person taking home? At least according to the state. So this is tricky. If they're controlling for people who are in New York City, then it's going to be smaller. But I have the suspicion that... It's statewide. What's the statewide average... Weekly income. You've got your CEOs, and you've got your uh, your individuals working per, uh, like um, resale and like uh, like McDonald's and stuff like that. So between See, CEOs and McDonald's, the hard thing is there's a lot of lower wage wake workers in New York. So I'm going to say that it, it skews downward. Uh, but then again, CEOs make just so much money. Yeah. That's the problem. So, uh, 20. 20 dollars a week, just because of the CEOs. Okay, here. Oh wait, uh, twenty dollars an hour. Twenty dollars. Twenty dollars an hour. So what? So that's that's a uh, what? Eight hundred dollars a week. Yeah, that's like that. eight, that's eight hundred. Yeah, just about eight hundred dollars a week. Here's how large the difference. Okay, so there's significantly more people who work in service and even. Um, skilled yeah. uh skilled labor mm-hmm. so there's a sig- that's that's the majority of the state and there's yeah not, i could have i there's not a that. lot of like ceos and, and business owners here's how much more the 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 ceos make than the average worker okay. they make so much more money that the average wage of every individual in new york state is seventeen hundred dollars a week Almost two thousand dollars a week. That's how much more money they make over the average person. Is that they skew the stat? They skew that to seventeen hundred dollars a week. What? Wait, but that's like fucking crazy. That's like what sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year. That's eighty-eight thousand dollars a year. They, oh my! So the people who make God. money make so much more money than the standard person that they've raised the average per individual, uh, if you were to like the mean, to eighty-eight thousand dollars a year. That's wild to me, because that's like, in my eyes, that's a high-paying salary in New York State for yeah. a for a uh, someone who's not a CEO. That's a high-paying salary almost anywhere except like. New York City and San Francisco. Yeah, no, eighty thousand um, dollars is, is uh, like a, like like um, that, that's basically like uh, a, you're a manager of a skilled laborer, so like managing um, sales or engineering or something like that. That's how much yes. you're going to be making eighty two hundred and twenty thousand dollars. So to bring the average up to, they think every person's a manager. <laughs> that's that's crazy, but wow. Yeah, like I got the email because they're saying basically we're cutting your pay by a hundred dollars um, uh, a year, but they then they showed how they got to that calculation, and I looked at it and I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I was like, I want to make what the average guy makes. Jeez, Louise. <sighs> All right. Well, 
<laughs> now that, that we're just de- now that we're depressed. <laughs> um. So, so during this period that he's you know making this money, uh, a second fa- Sasquatch. No, not a second. A third Sasquatch was reported as being found in the nearby town of Art. Okay. This one. We got left- two of them. Well, yeah. Well, we got the one in Bossburg. Yeah. We got the one that Joe Mattello tried to, to pitch. Okay. And then we now have a third one in Arden, which left 5,000 footprints. That there's a lot of footprints. Yeah. You're getting a bang for your buck. So other people saw them, right? Well, here's the thing. Yeah. Those footprints were a hoax. Oh, okay. Those were. The other ones weren't. Yeah. But these are. To- okay. The How do they know they were a hoax? The hoaxer told them that they were a hoax. Okay. His name was, was Ray Pickens. He was a local bricklayer. Yeah. Why did he do the hoax? He just wanted to show them that anyone could fake them. Uh, okay. Here. Well, there's going to be other Bigfoot stuff, and we'll go deeper into Patterson Gimlin. Patterson mm-hmm. Gimlin was a hoax because the hoaxer said it was a hoax. But people are calling it bullshit. They're like, ah, that like... P- like uh okay yeah well this one this one's universally agreed to be a hoax supposedly yeah um, the only reason okay so patterson gave john you just started a bigfoot rant i'm gonna make it super brief the guy okay. that made the costume yep came out and said i'm the guy that made the costume i mm-hmm. own a like essentially a bigfoot costume making thing like he works in that like, he specializes in humanoid costumes with long hair. So you're talking, yep. like, apes. You're talking about the opening of 2000, a Space mm-hmm. Odyssey-style stuff. And then everyone started calling BS on him. But the reason that everyone thinks it's real is because Patterson's wife owns the rights to the footage. So she puts a lot of money towards pushing its realism because she gets money every time that, um, essentially, like, Net Geo or Discovery or anybody uses that footage um on, yeah. on a tv show she's she's getting a kickback on that one so like the, a lot of people are saying that well that's not a hoax so did this guy get any kickback saying oh you're 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 full of bs but let, let, uh this guy i didn't see much but i don't know okay. um his feet were carved from two by ten inch planks that he nailed to his boots that that makes sense uh, they claim I mean, look that... at the track. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, it's not the track that was in the original image, but if it was anything similar, yeah. if it's something nailed to a boot, you're going to get the deeper at the heel and the toe, and you're also going to get the hard outline that was shown along the toes, as well as um, mm-hmm. if you look at the heel, I don't know how this guy carved it. The heel yeah. was flat. There was no carve to it, at least in the, the photo at the top of the copy. In fact, yeah. it was. It looked almost concave, but I could. You could chalk that up to just how when you when stuff gets packed down as you walk, it gets packed yeah. down. But it, it didn't seem like a lot uh, of care was taken into carving the the edges of it. At least there was there there were hard edges. Yeah. So layer on top of this, there's a common claim that Bigfoot strides are inhumanly long. Yeah. Ray retorted. It's not that hard to make. Just try. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. That's fair. There's... Anything inhuman means that it's outside normal human walking. If I take a normal, like, right? So that's, um, if you're pacing something off to measure it, you take, you start with your left foot, then you walk, and every left foot step is 10 feet. If mm-hmm. you take well, a well, slightly wait. larger than normal stride with each foot, it's excessively easy to get a, air quotes, inhuman step in that it's outside of the average. I want to take a second. Um, When you take, every time your left foot hits, it's 10 feet. That, that's okay. So old timey, when pe- shit was measured in links and chains, um, mm-hmm. people would measure stuff by pacing. And when you pace, you start with your feet together, you take a step with your left foot, and then... E- that's five feet, and then every left foot step you take, you count to ten. That'll usually get you there over, as long as you're not doing something incredibly long, within a couple feet. You'll, well, yeah, I, but I, my 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 point is, you're also a very tall person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
shorter people might not have the 10 foot step measure your measure your your stride if you're doing pacing just to make sure yeah um anywho so this isn't bad news for uh the bossberg squad right uh no it's totally legit why would, okay don't, yeah don't quite stop it why question it episode ended it's real done yeah well it's not a problem until march 1971 okay Everything seemed to be going great. Ivan was going to be getting uh, a nice payout. Hundreds and... of thousands of dollars, apparently, yeah. maybe. Yeah, he was going to get a nice payout. Everything was going to be good. Until they showed a copy of the film on a ranch about a mile east of Marx's home in Boston. You would think until they showed a copy of the film to anybody, but yeah. that's or I'm going to leave it. Yeah. So an eight-year-old named Stephen Don. Yeah saw the video, and just blew Ivan Marks' spot right up. Good! Yeah. So, Steven recognized the location it was filmed. It wasn't six miles north of Boston. It was oh. on the border of his the ranch that he lived on's property. Yes! That's so good! That's so, so good! The next day, uh, Peter took had Steven take him to the site, and it, like, matched up Branch for branch, rock for rock. It was clearly the place that it happened. He looked at the scenery and started measuring, like, how tall certain branches were and stuff like that. Yeah. At most, the creature in the video could be 5 foot 11. I was going to, oh, I was going to say, it looked, okay, imagine, so if anyone has ever seen 2001 A Space Odyssey, the monkey, but if it wasn't all furry, that's what's in the film. That wasn't a tall thing. That was what I would consider an average height person. Right. Oh, it, it was it was definitely an average height person. There's no doubt about it. Also, fun fact: Space Odyssey came out uh, two years before a year before the video was filmed. So you know, really, yeah, it was. I just looked it no. up because I was curious. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, Marx in the Interman continued to find footprints, hand footprints, and all manner of evidence, while Peter was very confused at what. What like you know why he lied about this? Yeah. Keep in mind, at this point, he hasn't confronted Ivan yet. He hasn't like gone out of his way and said, "Well, what are you doing?" <laughs> that being said, someone yeah. found more evidence of hoaxes. Oh yeah. Uh, looking at the photos in the film, uh huh. The film and the photos were taken at different times because the shadows didn't. <laughs> which if based on the original story he shot some film and then took some pictures with his camera the yeah. shadows would all match that's so, fantastic at this point peter decides i'm going to confront marks on this preponderance of evidence and he goes to ask him about it yeah marks found out about the plan to confront him he okay. fled in the night <laughs> okay he left a scattering of personal belongs behind and returned to bernie california never to interact with peter again or the bigfoot project or whatever yeah so because at this point peter's like yeah so this is a this is a bad faith thing so we're gonna just have the attorneys in washington open up that, that oh manager. god oh god hang on okay continue what was that? Uh, I My volume was all the way up, and I changed a tab, and a video started playing. Oh, okay. So, at this point, Peter decides to open the sealed film cameras. <laughs> yeah. Was it just a middle finger? Guess what was in there? A middle finger. It's just a severed middle finger. No. 100 feet of film. Oh, okay. It was old Disney cartoons from the 50s and 60s. They weren't even colored. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic it was oh, literal man. mickey mouse cartoons that's... so at least he got something from it oh yeah so there's a little bit of aftermath to this yeah no one learned anything <laughs> no of course not if people learned stuff we wouldn't be able to do this show really we wouldn't so the video was definitely is definitely considered a hoax by everyone, yeah. which is surprising. But anyway, uh, that being said, 
an upsetting number of people believe that the tracks are authentic. Come on, okay. Uh, namely, an actual anthropologist by the name of Rover Krantz. <sighs> okay. Who became interested in Bigfoot study because of these tracks. And now, I'm going to quote him verbatim because this is horrifying. <sighs> With all the subtle hints of anatomy design, he had to be a real genius, an expert at anatomy, very inventive, an original thinker. He had to outclass me in these areas, and I don't think anyone outclasses me in those areas, at least not since Leonardo da Vinci. So I say, such a person is impossible. Therefore, the tracks are real. That, I will say, is a very good quote, which demonstrates uh, something... I'll, I'll, I'll call a re reoccurring theme in this area that we're particularly interested in that um, it's it's the believers um, exhibit what I I'll, – I'll go out and limit. I'll say extreme hubris, right? It's if I couldn't have thought of this, then no one can. They think that they're – like no one can possibly be smarter or have ideas outside of what they've already had. And that quote sort of wraps that up pretty well in in that, well, I couldn't have thought of it, so therefore no one else can, therefore this is real. Yeah. So um, that's like, uh, what's it called? What's it called? What's it called? Uh, there's a, there's a, like an a, inversion of that. Yeah. It's a logical right? fallacy that I yeah. forget what it's called, but it's a fallacy. It, it, there's an inversion of that. It, oh, the, the Dunning-Kruger effect. That's it. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's where people who have a non-average ability see themselves as above average. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So so the, the idea for Dunning-Kruger is that the, the less informed you are about anything, the more you think you know about that thing. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's, ba that's basically what this is. Although this is like a level of hubris and ego that is upsettingly common, as it Brandon is. said. And the very funny thing I'll say is that um, uh, Atlantis was invented uh, uh, to to it, it was a story by Plato to teach about hubris and what happened. So it's the fall of a civilization, and the idea that. So many people think it's real because they couldn't understand something. Therefore, it must be true. Like it's it's a sto it's it's perpetuating itself in a way, which is I find pretty funny. It's definitely a self perpetuating story. Yeah. So, um, FYI, just as like a little bit of an aside, yeah, you can't reproduce internal biology from a footprint. No. Um, and when I was reading it, people also seem to be confused as to why. Uh, someone would lie about something just to screw with people. Yeah. Which reminds me of a, once again, it reminds me of a clip from Arthur. Oh, okay. Yeah. You really think someone would do that? Just go on the internet and tell lies? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Arthur. Um, so... He, Ivan Marks went on to make movies. Oh, good. He made good. The Legend of Bigfoot uh -huh. in 1975 and The Shadow of Bigfoot in 1977. He died in 1999. Okay. Uh, you can watch The Legend of Bigfoot on archive.org right now. It's oh, free. fantastic. There's a link, by the way, in the description. Um, go find it yourself, archive.org. If you're a hodag, just click on the link and you'll get to it. That's yeah. I'll, I'll be watching that. It's terrible. It's uh -huh. a bad movie. It's clearly fake. The the footage from the uh, uh from the uh, link from before where the guy was in the river is from it. Yeah, it's clearly fake. It's so obviously fake. It's not even like a question. So the question then becomes why 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 does anyone consider this to be anything related to real? Yeah, because it's clear and obvious that this particular case was perpetrated by a Bigfoot hoaxer, and there were, like, four hoaxers involved in it. Additionally, I'm of the opinion that the people in the, the Jeep, yeah, they laid the tracks, and when 
when Ivan went into the woods to find the tracks, he saw them there. So he drove away to distract Renee because he didn't want Renee finding out that it was real because it was effectively all just a setup <sighs> so he could do the film and make a, a, a boatload of money. Yeah. Okay. That's honestly, th- listen, this is my conjecture. I don't have proof of this, but that is my hypothesis. Yeah, at best we don't know what we're, they were doing, but it's notable that there was other people in the area when this was happening. And they also said that they saw them as well and got out of the area. Oh, that's true. That's so, okay. Here's another thing that I'm suspicious about. If I write down someone's license plate number, mm-hmm. I can't get their phone number. I can't talk to them. If I see a car, I can't just write down the plate and then call up the DMV or the police and go, hey, can you give me their phone number? That's something when you first said it that that was another little red flag to me is that those two aren't – you you can't draw a straight line between plate and phone number. I'd call it a pink flag because it is a small town. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. You know, that is true that uh, for, for a town, they're – they're, they're basically that town is four times larger than the place where I work. Yeah. And I saw this is true. Last week, I saw a different car in the parking lot and I asked someone like, hey, what's uh, I haven't seen this car before and of a, a population of 200 people. They went, oh, yeah, that's uh, so and so brought the different car because uh, he took his other car into the shop. So he's using his wife's car or whatever. So it's not weird to me to think that if you just increase that size by four that you'd still be able to go to almost anybody and say, Hey, what was this car doing? And they can go, Oh yeah, that's uh so-and-so. Yeah. So it's not completely out of the realm of possibility. Yeah. Um, and 800 also was the maximum size of the town. Yeah. And it was on a, it was definitely on a decline after that. Yeah. Um, there is one other thing I want to note about the story. Yeah. This story was largely written by the Bigfoot hunters themselves. Okay, so we should so, take everything at like they're they're professionals, they're experts. There's no reason why anybody would exaggerate well, or make anything up. We should just take their word for it. Well, my hypothesis is they did a lot more embarrassing stuff on this story than they admitted Look at the to. videos. Yeah. Like because let's be real, it's a lot of embarrassing stuff for the the hunters happened here. Yeah, I would not be surprised if they went whole ham on a lot more things and didn't doubt anything in the moment and just went yeah. with the flow. And then after the fact, they realized what was going on and they're like, oh, I got a safe face. Yeah, I would not be surprised. But that's conjecture. Um, Before we close the episode, though. Yeah, we got ourselves a Christmas cryptid. Woo! Happy cryptid days, man. So, uh. I was going to do the this episode on this cryptid originally, but then I did some research into it, and... Uh, not a lot. There's not a lot to yeah, it. That, that's, that's a lot of stuff. Uh, if anybody wants to know, we look at a lot of cryptids, and most of them, super short. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, so this week, it's the infamous Icelandic cryptid, the Yule Cat, or Jolakatan. Is that how you say it? Say it again. Yolakatan? Is that how it's said? Uh, I have video with audio to prove it. The cat was huge and it was yeah. said to eat people who have not received any new clothes before Christmas Eve. Uh, <laughs> okay, you better be thankful for them socks. Yeah, uh, its oldest written account was 19th century, but it's purported to be an ancient tradition. Okay. I doubt that, and I had the feeling that its capital was propaganda to force people to make people want to be better workers. That's <laughs> probable. Honestly, that's that's my guess. Yeah, but I I'm not trying to be like reductivist or anything. I just legitimately think that people in power are like, hey, uh, here's a ancient legend. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you have to work really hard, even if it's cold, because if you don't get clothes the yola cat cat and will uh will murder you yeah yeah that sounds good although I mean, that being said i put a bare bones cursory amount of research into this yeah uh, that was all i got and i also took a lot of screenshots of the book 
that it I read is, a lot of the stuff I will in. say the screenshot attached is maybe the best illustration. It's the most cat-like illustration ever because it is of a cat showing its anus mm-hmm. to the viewer. It is yep. looking at you, its butt facing you, looking over its shoulder, its eyes full of disdain, just flaunting its beehole. And that's really the most cat-like thing that anyone could have drawn. It's also the spirit of Christmas. Also, there's fangs. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. So, as always, if you want to get in contact with us, uh, we have our website, cryptopediacast.com, where all of our, all the notes, the links, show notes, everything we're about to say, you can get access to them all there. For Instagram, it's at cryptopediacast. The Twitter is also at cryptopediacast. Email is cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast.com we have a patreon just search cryptopedia on patreon you'll find it or click the dollar sign next to sasquatch because he needs that money and a special thanks to that fiendishly fantastic magnificently magnificent clay sinclair thank you clay clay is one of the jackalopes. If you'd like to have your name read in the credits or have access to any of the other awesome um, Patreon content that we have, uh, yeah, feel free to uh, patronize. This is the middle of our Patreon bit, so I won't go on much longer, but thank you, Clay. <laughs> this, 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 uh, this episode was a hit piece on him. He's going to sue us. <laughs> it, it's, he's going to be pretty PO'd, man. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to get off the couch for a while. Uh, <laughs> anywho, we have a Facebook group. That's it. Uh, if you like the show, rate, review, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, if you're going to leave a review, iTunes is definitely a great place to leave it. Also, we have a lot of people downloading on CastBox, so CastBox is a great place to leave reviews as well because that seems to be surprisingly where most of our downloads are. Wow. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, if you have any monster requests or stories, be sure to tweet at us or send us an email. Um, because, like we said just a few minutes ago, we look at a lot of monsters and a lot of cryptids and a lot of paranormal events, and not all of them have great stuff. I mean, I think in the next year, I'll probably start branching out into a few more paranormal events just because. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's only so many times we can tell the story of a cryptid being something that wasn't seen. Yeah, I think even uh, like a yokai grab bag would, would yeah. be fun, where we just have a, f- a couple episodes where it's you know multiple yeah. topics or just a collation of topics that we couldn't yeah. get a full episode at on their own. That'd be fun. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna probably be next year. We're gonna probably shift up the format a little bit, play around with some things, get more inter- some uh some new topics and if you have anything you want to hear about in the same vein as what we've been talking about just let us know um additionally send me creepy pastas and cryptid pastas so i can read them uh when i actually will get the chance to read them is a mystery because it largely depends on when i can scream at myself for an hour at a time uh i'll also be posting those as five dollar and up tier episodes to the patreon eventually uh, but if you suggest a topic, I will personally send you a copy of that MP3 so you can listen to it. Uh, yeah. Because while, yes, it is going to be Patreon only, if you suggest something, I think you deserve to get a little bit of listen. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, as last week so continues this week, we need commercial ideas because someone's desperate. <laughs> you can find me on instagram at donkey underscore hands my website is boyerb.com my email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com and my twitter is at crypto brandon capital c capital b uh you can find me on instagram at mu 27 on twitter i'm at jf dunham my website is g20.in <laughs> What? I don't know. What's that mean? Uh, my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. <laughs> oh. 
Our art is done by Tom Hill. His Instagram is at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com. And his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. And as always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird. Wow. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,